Hi, nice to see you all back here again. These are the problems on rotational motion. Number one talks about a child rolling a ball on a level floor 3.5 meter to another child. The ball makes 15 revolutions. What is its diameter? Okay. Uh, you should know that when it rotates once, the ball moves through a total distance equal to its circumference. And the circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the radius. So that's the idea here. Therefore, since it makes 15 revolutions, 15 times 2 pi r should be equal to 3.5. Okay, in 15 revolutions, it moves through a total distance of 15 times 2 pi r, which should be 3.5, which can be rearranged to find the radius. And we get it as 3.7 times 10 to the negative 2 meter. And the diameter is going to be twice that. Seven point four times ten to the negative two meter. Right, let's move on to the second one. In this second question, a grinding wheel zero point three five meter in diameter rotates at twenty five hundred rotations per minute. Calculate its angular velocity in radians per second. And B, what are the linear speed and acceleration of a point on the edge of the grinding wheel? So, rotations per minute in physics will not work because you have to have time in seconds. So, you have to convert rotations per minute into rotations per second and to do that you divide by 60 because the number of rotations in one second is going to be less than the number of rotations in one minute so divide by 60 and then angular velocity is the total angle covered by the time and the angle that it moves through in one rotation is 2 pi radians Therefore, you multiply 2 pi with the number of rotations it makes in one second. Okay. And the number of rotations that it makes in one second is called frequency. So, again, find the frequency dividing 2500 by 60. So, now you have the number of rotations made in one second and that is called frequency. And the angular velocity is 2 pi times frequency. That gives 261.8 radians per second. And to find the linear velocity, the formula is V is omega times R. To multiply with the radius, you get the linear velocity. Now, acceleration is omega squared R. Remember, this is centripetal acceleration. So that is omega squared times the radius. You have omega, square it, multiply by the radius, you get 1.2 times 10 to the 4 meter per second squared. In this question, we have a 70 centimeter diameter wheel accelerates uniformly about its center from 130 rpm to 280 rpm in four seconds find its angular acceleration and then the radial and tangential components okay once again you have rotations per minute you have to change both into rotations per second and multiplying each one with 2 pi will give us the angular velocities and acceleration is change in angular velocity divided by time 
So the initial angular velocity is 2 pi times 130 divided by 60, which gets it per second. That's 13.6 radian per second. And the final angular speed is 2 pi times 280 by 60, which is 29.3 radian per second. Now, according to this formula, rearranging angular acceleration alpha is omega minus omega naught by t. We have both, so 29.3 minus 13.6 by, the time taken is given as 4 seconds in the problem, so divide by 4, and that gives 3.9 radian per second squared. Okay, now we have to find the radial and tangential components. And that is after 2 seconds. Be careful about that. It's after 2 seconds. So, after 2 seconds, let's find the angular speed. Started at 13.6. And uh, alpha is what we got now, 3.9 times 2. So, we get 21.5 radians per second so the radial acceleration can be found out using omega squared r just like in the last question that's 21.5 squared times the radius gives 160 meter per second squared and the tangential acceleration is given by the formula r times alpha really need to know the difference between these two and look at the two formulas they are different so tangential acceleration is when it actually speeds up so that's now 3.93 which is the actual angular acceleration times radius is 1.4 meter per second squared. Remember that uh, even if the object moves with a constant angular velocity, it always has centripetal acceleration. Uh, but it has tangential acceleration only if it speeds up. And in this problem, it definitely speeds up. That's why it has tangential acceleration. On to the fourth one. A cooling fan is turned off when it is running at 850 revolutions per minute. Again, you've got to change it into seconds, so divide by 60. It turns 1500 revolutions before it comes to a stop. So what's the final angular velocity? Well, it did stop, so it is zero. From the frequency, can we find the initial angular velocity? Yes. And since the angle covered in one revolution is 2 pi radians, if you multiply 2 pi with 1500, wouldn't we get the total angle that it makes before it stops? Yes. So those are the terms that we have. Let's look at them one by one. Omega naught is 2 pi times f, where f is the number of rotations in one second and in this problem it's going to be 850 divided by 60 so 89 radian per second is the initial angular velocity final is zero once again because it stopped we can use the formula omega squared is equal to omega naught squared plus 2 alpha theta. This equation corresponds to the one that we have in linear motion that goes by v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2 a d. Same formula. Okay. Rearrange. Uh, we have to find the alpha which is the angular acceleration. Substitute the numbers that we have and what about the angle? It's 1500 times 2 pi. 
because in each rotation the angle described is 2 pi radians and that gives negative 0.42 radian per second squared well the negative is because it's slowing down now the second part of the question says how long did it take the fan to come to a complete stop so now we have to find t we can use the equation that corresponds to the king which is theta is equal to one half omega naught plus omega multiplied by t or we could use the other equation you can do it in at least three ways now in this equation it's you know angle described is the average angular speed multiplied by time so that works and uh, when you substitute theta is 1500 times 2 pi omega naught is 89 omega is 0 so substitute the terms and you get 211.79 seconds 211.79 seconds all right in this fifth question the tires of a car make 65 revolutions as the car reduces its speed uniformly from 95 km per hour to 45 km per hour now that there itself is a wrong unit we need to change it into meter per second the tires have a diameter of 0 0.80 meter what was the angular acceleration and if it continues to decelerate how much more time is required okay going back what are the terms that we have 95 kilometer per hour to change it in meter per second you multiply by 5 divide by 18 okay so you get 26.39 meter per second and that is the initial angular speed I mean the initial linear speed from which you get the angular speed by omega is v naught by the radius now the final again change 45 kilometer per hour into meter per second that gives 12.5 meter per second and omega again using v by r it's 31.25 radians per second now we can find alpha saying omega squared minus omega naught squared by 2 theta substitute since it makes 65 revolutions you've got to multiply 65 with 2 pi because in each revolution the angle covered is 2 pi radians that gives negative 4.1 radian per second squared in the B part how much more time will it take to stop so the final angle of velocity is 0 it continues with the same alpha okay That is a mistake. So it should be 0 minus 31.25. I'm sorry for that. Divided by negative 4.1 gives 7.6 seconds. Well, I'm trying to make a, a longer video by adding some more questions. So, although it begins with question number 1, do not worry. These are the questions that we did in class anyway. With the aid of a string, a gyroscope is accelerated from rest to 32 radians per second. In 0 0.40 seconds, what is its angular acceleration? How many revolutions does it go through in the process? Okay, so the initial angular velocity is 0. The final is 32 radians per second. The time is given. And to find angular acceleration, alpha 
you got to go find the difference in the angle of velocity divided by the time so that's 32 minus 0 that's final minus initial by time which gives 80 radians per second squared and it says how many revolutions does it go through in the process okay how do we do that we use the formula theta is equal to the average angle of velocity multiplied by time we can find the total angle and when you get the total angle we know that the angle covered in one revolution is 2 pi so the total angle should be 2 pi times the number of rotations so n here is the number of rotations make n the subject and you get 6.4 by 2 pi which is actually one revolution there you go the second question a soccer player extends a lower leg in a kicking motion by exerting a force with a muscle above the knee in the front of a leg she produces an angular acceleration of 30 radian per second squared and her lower leg has a moment of inertia of 0 0.750 kilogram meter squared what is the force exerted by the muscle if its effective perpendicular lever arm is 1.90 centimeter okay torque is the product of distance and the force which is also given by I times alpha there are two formulas for torque so putting them together and rearranging F becomes I alpha by R moment of inertia is given the angular acceleration is given too and the radius is 0 0.0190 because this is in centimeters got to change it into meters that gives the torque as 1.18 times 10 to the 3 newtons in the third question suppose you exert a force of 180 newton tangential to a 0 0.280 meter radius 75 kilogram grindstone which is a solid disk what torque is exerted let's take it part by part is the force given here yes 180 newtons how is it applied tangential the radius is given torque is just the product of force and the distance so r times f is going to be 0 0.280 times 180 newtons so that will be 50.4 newton meter in the b part what is the angular acceleration assuming negligible opposing friction and uh, angular acceleration can be found out by using the other formula for torque which is I alpha we already know the torque and uh, do we know the I yes the moment of inertia for a disk is MR squared by 2 so that's what I'm using now one half MR squared the mass is 70 the radius is let's see 0 0.280 squared so now you get the alpha as 17.1 radian per second squared and in the C part what is the angular acceleration if there is an opposing frictional force so first we did it without friction now they're saying uh, in the question that there is a friction so if there is friction then you got to apply a force over and above the frictional force so this is the torque due to friction which is the radius times frictional force which is 0 0.300 newton meter and therefore the net torque must be tau minus 2f and that gives 50.1 
Newton meter uh, because friction opposes it and therefore the alpha will be slightly less than in the previous case it's going to be 50.1 divided by the same moment of inertia or rotational inertia which gives 17.0 radian per second squared so you see the small difference because of considering friction okay while punting a football a kicker rotates his leg about the hip joint or that's the pivot the moment of inertia of the leg is 3.75 kilogram meter squared and its rotational kinetic energy is 175 joules what is the angular velocity of the leg Okay, the moment of inertia is given and kinetic energy of rotation is one half I omega squared. We know the I, we know the kinetic energy of rotation, so rearrange to make omega the subject. So 2 times uh, 175 divided by 3.75 gives 9.66 radians per second. In the B part, we got to find the velocity of the tip of the punter's shoe. If it is 1.05 meter from the hip joint, well, linear velocity is the product of radius and omega. Radius is 1.05 meter, omega is 9.66. Multiply them, you get 10.1 meter per second. C part explain how the football can be given a velocity greater than the tip of the shoe. Well, because of the conservation of linear momentum, momentum is conserved. And since the, the leg obviously has a much bigger mass than the football, Surely the football has to fly at a greater speed to have the same momentum. That makes sense? It's just like a collision. Okay, number five. A playground merry-go-round has a mass of 120 kilogram and a radius of 1.80 meter and it is rotating with an angular velocity of 0.5 revolutions per second. What is its angular velocity after a 22 kilogram child gets onto it by grabbing its outer edge? This is a clear case of conservation of angular momentum. Definitely it's going to slow down, right? Okay, by the conservation of angular momentum, I1 omega 1 is equal to I2 omega 2 or I omega is equal to I prime omega prime anyway you like it and remember that the new moment of inertia is going to be the sum of the moment of inertia of the the merry-go-round and the child okay you got to add them up and for the child it is MR squared So now making omega prime the subject from here, it's going to be I by I prime omega. And I is half MR squared, but I prime is half MR squared plus MR squared. Okay, remember that that's for the child. That's the origin of the disk, okay. So the new one is this total one, the sum of the two, because the child is now on to the merry-go-round. So when you do that, um, okay, I have to have a 2 there because what I did is I multiplied throughout by 2 to get rid of the half, okay. So there must be a 2 here, a 2 here, okay, barely noticeable anyway. So when you do that, you get the answer as 0 0.366 revolutions per second. So omega prime is 0.366 because that's in revolutions per second. We need it in radians per second. So multiply by 2 pi, you get it. Consider the 10 kilogram motorcycle wheel shown in the figure. Assume it to be approximately an annular ring 
inner radius given, out radius given, uh, and it's on its center stand. The drive chain exerts a force of 2300 Newton at a radius of 5 centimeters. So that's where the drive chain is. What is the angular acceleration? Okay, find the torque first. Torque is R times F or I alpha. There are two formulas. Now you can use I alpha, make alpha the subject. And uh, torque is R times F. In this case, because it's an annular ring, oh no, it should be M, okay, R squared plus R squared by 2. I'm going to change that. Substitute the numbers. You have the outer radius and the inner radius. Okay, now it's a plus. You get 84.6 radian per second squared. In the B part, what is the tangential acceleration? What's the relation? A is R alpha. R times alpha. So now we have alpha, so just multiply it with the radius. Which is 0 0.440, the outer radius of course, and you get 37.2. And in the C part, how long starting from rest does it take to reach an angular velocity of 80 radian per second? Okay, omega 1, 0 starts from rest. Omega 2 is 80 radians per second. Alpha, we know, 84.6, and you got to find the time. Formula, omega 2 minus omega 1 by T. So make time the subject. And you get 0 0.946 seconds. I'm sorry you can't see that. So I'll say that again. It's 0 0.946 seconds. See, although these uh, in these videos I'm, I'm speaking really fast, I know you have the ability to pause and go back over it again. And that's why you can do it how many times you like. So I hope this helps you. Thank you and good luck. Well, in the 11th question, a sphere of radius 20 centimeter and mass 1.80 kilogram starts from rest and rolls without slipping down a 30 degree incline that is 10 meter long. Calculate its translational and rotational speeds when it reaches the bottom. Okay, like in the last question, since it's rolling, rotating, it has rotational kinetic energy and uh, because the center is moving forward, it also has translational kinetic energy. Uh, so that's the diagram, 30 degrees is the angle, 10 meter is the total length. But the basic idea in this problem is that when it's at the top of the incline, it has potential energy and as it rolls down that potential energy gets converted into the total kinetic energy so we need to find the height first and to find the height from this right angle triangle if you take sine theta it's going to be opposite side by hypotenuse that will give us the h so h is 10 times sine 30 sine 30 is 0.5 so that gives 5 meter. Once you get the height, the potential energy, mgh, is equal to the total kinetic energy, which is rotational kinetic energy plus translational kinetic energy. This is once again a sphere, and we've just proved in the last problem that the total would be 7 by 10. So after you substitute all that, you know, so I'm not doing that again. So you get 7 by 10 for the total. Masses are cancelled. So you can find the linear velocity. Square root 10 gh by 7. So all you need is h. So 10 times 9.8 times 5 divided by 7. Which gives 
8.36 meter per second. Therefore, omega is V by R is 8.36 divided by 0 0.2 because 20 centimeter is 0 0.2 meter. That gives 41.8 radians per second. So now we have got the we have got the translation speed and the angular speed. Question 12, uh, it's a very good question. A 2.3 meter long pole is balanced vertically on its tip. Now visualize that. A long pole balanced vertically on its tip. It starts to fall and its lower end does not slip. What will be the speed of the upper end of the pole just before it hits the ground? And there is a hint, use the conservation of energy. Now in this case, the, the potential energy, while it's a vertical, it's potential energy, uh, is going to be converted into kinetic energy as it falls. But when you take the potential energy, you've got to take mgh. And don't worry about not having the mass, because the mass will get cancelled on either side. The important thing is that, what is the height? Is the height going to be the entire length of the pole? No. Where do you imagine the mass of an object to be situated? Here you're right, at the center of gravity. So the height would be taken as from the ground to the midpoint. So instead of 2.30, you're going to take half of that. Did that make sense? So that will be mg times the height should be equal to it is only rotating so one half i omega squared and isn't it rotating about one end and the moment of inertia is ml squared by three hold on that's a lot of information so let's get it one by one mgh when it's vertical it's potential energy and as it falls it is rotational kinetic energy Height is half of the length and moment of inertia is ml squared by 3 because this the rod is rotating about one end. Omega is v by r so that's v squared by r squared which is l squared here. Okay, So the masses get cancelled, the twos get cancelled and you can simply find the velocity using root 3 gl. gives 8.22 meter per second. Good question with a great idea. In the 13th question, a person stands hands at his side on a platform that is rotating at a rate of 1.30 revolutions per second. If he raises his arms to a horizontal position, the speed of rotation decreases. 0 0.80 revolutions per second. Why? Simply because when he rotate, when he lifts his arms up, particles are distributed far further away from the axis of rotation. That increases the rotational inertia. And since the angular momentum must be conserved, the angular speed has to decrease. Okay, so rotational inertia increases when the arms are raised and since angular momentum, what's the formula for angular momentum? I times omega. I times omega must be conserved. So L, caps L, that's the symbol for angular momentum, is equal to I omega. So I1 omega 1 should be equal to I2 omega 2. And since I2 is greater than I1, omega 2 is less than omega 1. Therefore, it's decreased. Now, by, by what factor has his moment of inertia changed? So, you're looking for I2. It's I1 times 2 pi F1 by 2 pi F2 because omega is 2 pi times frequency. 
two pi's get cancelled and we get 1.625 I1 which means I2 is 1.625 times I1 so the rotational inertia is increased by a factor of 1.6 times approximately in the 14th question a figure skater can increase her spin rotation rate from an initial rate of one revolution every two seconds to a final rate of three revolutions per second how does she do that uh, by decreasing her moment of inertia how by doing exactly the opposite of what was said in the last question here she pulls her legs together drops her hands and tries to make the rotational inertia as small as possible when she does that the angular speed increases okay Remember, this is true only when there is no external torque. The angular momentum is conserved. An angular momentum is the product of I and omega. So we say I1 omega 1 is equal to I2 omega 2. So make I2 the subject, omega 1 is, it's one revolution per uh, every two seconds, that means the frequency was half, okay, because frequency is number of revolutions in one second. So one every two seconds is half, that's why you see the 0.5. And then in the second case, finally it's 3, 2 pi is cancelled. And you get the final moment of inertia as 0.77 kilogram meter squared. And uh, how, is, how does she accomplish this? By pulling her arms together, bringing her feet together, trying to reduce the distribution of the particles and getting it closer to the axis of rotation. Okay. In the 15th question, what is the angular momentum of a figure skater spinning at 3.5 revolutions per second with arms in close to body? Assuming her to be a uniform cylinder with a height of 1.5 meter, a radius of 15 centimeter and a mass of 55 kilogram. How much torque is required to slow her to a stop in 5 seconds, assuming she does not move her arms? Okay. Question starts with what is the angular momentum? What is the formula for angular momentum? I times omega. Uh, okay, I says assume that she is a cylinder, and we know that uh, the rotational inertia of a cylinder is m r squared by two. So we take a mass, fifty-five times the radius. Uh, 15 centimeters to be changed into meter there, 0.15 divided by 2, which gives 0.6185 kilogram meter squared. And omega is, uh, for the umpteenth time, it's 2 pi times frequency. Frequency is 3.5, so that's the omega. You multiply I and omega, you get the angular momentum. And in this case, the angular momentum is... The product of the two gives 13.6 kilogram meter squared per second. That's the unit rounded off to 14 kilogram meter squared per second. That's the A part. And the B part says how much torque. There are two formulas for torque. One is R times F and the other is I times alpha. In this case we know I and we could find alpha. Because it says she is to slow uh, to a stop. So we know the angular, initial angular velocity. And uh, we can also do it this way. Torque 
is equal to dl by dt change in angular momentum by time the final angular momentum is 0 so it's going to be 0 minus 14 divided by 5 which gives negative 2.8 meter Newton well in the sixth question the bolts on the cylinder head of an engine require tightening to a torque of 88 meter Newton if a wrench is 28 centimeter long what force perpendicular to the wrench must the mechanic exert at its end if the six-sided bolt head is 15 millimeter in diameter estimate the force applied near each of the six points by a socket wrench well this problem mainly deals with torque and you know that torque is force multiplied by the perpendicular distance force multiplied by the perpendicular distance okay there you go r f sine theta but theta is 90 so it's r times f okay therefore f is tau by the radius of the distance torque is 88 divided by 0.28 in meters gives 310 newtons and in the B part remember it is six-sided the bolt is six-sided so there are six points where the force acts so now to find the force you will divide tau by six times r and the diameter is 15 millimeter so the radius is half of that which is 7.5 millimeter change it into meter divide by thousand and that gives us this number 0 0.0075 so that is the radius in millimeter and you get 2000 newtons that you have to apply Uh, 2000 newtons is actually applied on the bolt head so this is very convenient because the mechanic is only applying 310 but that translates to 2000 newtons see you see the advantage of using a six-sided bolt you get a greater force acting in the seventh one a small 650 gram ball on the end of a thin light rod is rotated in a horizontal circle of radius 1.2 meter. Calculate the moment of inertia of the ball about the center of the circle. The mass is given, although it's in grams, and uh, the, the radius is given, and moment of inertia is mr squared mass times radius squared and that is for a small particle a mass is 0 0.650 in kilograms and radius 1.2 squared that gives 0.94 kilogram meter squared in the B part you got to find the torque needed to keep the ball rotating at constant angular velocity if air resistance exerts a force of 0 0.020 Newton. Now how can you keep the velocity constant? Only if you apply a force exactly equal to the air resistance. So that means the force needed to be applied is 0 0.020 Newtons. And torque is the product of force and the perpendicular distance. Okay, so torque needed is the same as caused by friction or air resistance and therefore the net torque would be zero, only then the angular acceleration would be zero. That means the angular velocity is constant. Okay, so in short the applied torque is equal to the torque by friction and torque is product of force and distance force is 0 0.020 radius is 1.2 
multiply them you get 2.4 times 10 to the negative 2 meter newton well i lost the recording in this part uh, moment of inertia of a cylinder is one half mr squared because it's just treated as a thick disc and uh, as long as it's rotating about its axis and that is one half times the mass in kilograms which is 0 0.580 times the radius squared a radius has to be changed into meter that's why 8.5 times 10 to the negative 2 that gives us this number that is the moment of inertia in the B part you have to find the applied torque needed to accelerate it from rest to 1500 rpm in 5 seconds if it is known to slow down from 1500 rpm to rest in 55 seconds now that's a good question why would it slow down because of friction so the second part of the question okay that was a small disturbance anyway this uh, the second part of the question actually helps us to find uh, the torque due to friction because it slows down from 1500 rpm to rest so find friction first now the torque due to friction is I alpha and uh, alpha is angular acceleration so it is change in omega by time the moment of inertia we just got right now and uh, we'll find the change in omega as we did in other problems omega is 2 pi times f where f is the number of rotations in one second that's why 1500 is divided by 60 so that's that is the frequency that gives 157 and of course the final angular velocity is zero so the change is 157 now actually it is 0 minus 157 divided by 55 and that's why you have negative 157 there that gives negative 5.98 times 10 to the negative 3 so the net torque that is to be applied must be over and above this over and above this So the net torque is going to be the applied one plus the friction one. So that's uh, I alpha uh, plus the torque. Actually, that's that's supposed to be a plus. And that gives 72 times 10 to the negative 3 meter newton. Small lack of space here because I want everything to fit onto one screen. But uh, hopefully you understood this. Ninth one. A helicopter rotor blade can be considered a long thin rod. Okay. If each of the three rotor helicopter blades is 3.75 meter long, and as a mass of 160 kilogram, calculate the moment of inertia of the three rotor blades about the axis of rotation. Well, for the formula for the moment of inertia of a long thin rod when it's rotating about one end is ml squared by 3. ml squared by 3. If it's rotating about the center, it's ml squared by 12 but in this case it's rotating about its end I'm trying to show you how to get that formula but you can just remember that it is ml squared by 3 so that's the formula that you need to remember and since there are three of them you multiply three times ml squared by 3 the threes cancel out so the mass is 160 times 3.75 squared that gives 2250 kilogram meter squared and in the second part B part how much torque must the motor apply to bring the blades up to a speed of 5 revolutions per second in 8 seconds 
Okay, so the, what's the initial speed? Zero. And the final, five revolutions per second. So that's the frequency. So we can find the angular speed. And we have the time. Remember, torque is I times alpha. And alpha, the angular acceleration, is change in angular speed divided by the time. That's the initial angular speed. That's the final 2 pi times 5 divided by the time is 8. So you get 3.92 radians per second squared. And now I, we've already found it as 2250 times alpha. 3.92 gives 8835.73 meter newton. Tenth question, a bowling ball of mass 7.3 kilogram and radius 9 centimeter rolls without slipping down a lane at 3.3 meter per second. Calculate its total kinetic energy. Oh, you know the ball is rolling, so it has rotational kinetic energy. But at the same time, the center of the ball is also moving forward, isn't it? Therefore, it has linear kinetic energy. So the total kinetic energy is the sum of the two. And rotational kinetic energy is one half I omega squared. Okay, total kinetic energy is the sum of the rotational and the translational kinetic energy. Translation means moving in a straight line. That's one half I omega squared plus one half mv squared. That is rotational kinetic energy that is translational kinetic energy and this is a ball it's a sphere and the moment of inertia for a sphere is 2 by 5 mr squared 2 by 5 mr squared so you substitute that for i and you get one half times 2 by 5 mr squared for i and then omega is v by r. So that's omega squared, so it's v squared by r squared, plus one half mv squared, which is the second term. The r squareds get cancelled, the twos get cancelled, so now you have one by five mv squared plus one half mv squared. So one by five plus one by two gives seven by ten. Yes. If you put it in a calculator, you're going to get 0 0.7, so 7 by 10 mv squared. And now we know the mass is 7.3 and the velocity is 3.3. Oh, I'm sorry, I had to put the velocity. That's 3.3 squared, which gives 55.65 joules. Initially I had put the radius. You don't even need the radius in this case. Notice that. You only need the mass and the velocity.